We all live. Good morning. I'm Pastor Drew Bradshaw from Riverside Christian Assembly. What a joy, what not a what a delight it is to be with you as we continue winning souls, making disciples, giving God all the glory for it. I'm holding my newest book. Thank you guys for getting it. I see the pictures coming in. Mike, man, that was awesome sending me the photo. Your daughter holding up the book, The Fall of the House of Ahab. Get it on Amazon. It's a great read. It's a great devotion. You love the Old Testament. You love the stories. You love the sermonizing. You will love this book. It's got great pictures. It's powerful. It's pointed. Also, if you enjoy these videos, two things. We put them on the Riverside Christian Assembly app, which is free. Thousands of videos. We got college classes on there. We got audio books on there. We got morning devotions, Sunday sermons. You will love it. It's a one-stop shop to really grow. Secondly, we're getting the YouTube channel going. So if you like YouTube, check it out. We got all of our shorts, those really high-quality videos made by Joey Rojas. Well, that being said, let's pray, and then let's get to our study this morning. Our Father in heaven, we delight in you. Lord, we are excited to get your word out in many ways and many times. Lord, we pray your Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us today. Help us to be great ambassadors for your kingdom. Lord, we want to see your word spread. We want to see our impact be used for you. Lord, we pray for Pastor Jeannie that you would heal her body. Lord, do great and mighty miracles among your people. Lord, we rely on you. Father, we're asking for more of your help, more of your spirit. Move in power among us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, let us continue our study on the book of Colossians today. I would entitle it, The Unseen Struggle. If you have a Bible, go ahead and turn to the book of Colossians chapter 2. We'll only be looking at verse 1. When you pick up some food at the grocery store, try and imagine all the work that went into that burger patty. There was a, a the grocery store. They had to stock it, of course. Somebody had to bag it at a, a factory. Somebody had to raise that cattle. I mean, there's a lot of people involved along the journey. You think of a medication that we might take for granted, but it might have taken many times where people were sick and in pain and they were trying different medication and there was adverse effects and maybe not all of them lived it. And all of that happened just so we could get this medication that maybe we take for granted. There's been a lot of struggles, a lot of effort to get you to this point. Say it again. There's been a lot of effort, a lot of struggles just to get you to this point. Parents, you probably understand this the best. All the dreams, all the hopes, all the ambition you have for your children, all the sacrifices you make so they can have a, a good life, a better life. I hope that we see spiritually that too has happened. Let's know to Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. For I want you to know the great conflict, the great agony that I have for you, for those in Laodicea, for as many of us not seen me in the flesh. This was one of those congregations that Paul had never been to personally. He wanted to go see them, but he had never been in their congregation. He had never preached to their people. He had never been in their houses or broke bread with them or baptized any of them. He, he, he knew them through Epaphras. I think that he knew Epaphras in Acts chapter 19 when he laid hands on some of these guys. It says that the word of God spread through the whole province of Asia. Perhaps Epaphras was one of those filled with the Holy Spirit, took it back to his hometown of Colossae. He knows Philemon. He knows some of the other people Paul knows. They got a congregation going and they're growing and they have some questions that Paul is answering, but he wishes he could be there. There's an agony that's happened for you. There are prayers that have already happened for you. There are hopes that have happened for you. Now, of course, our mothers had had an agony bringing us into this world a great pain. But there have been Christian brothers and sisters along the way that have had a great pain to, to bring you into this world spiritually. Of course, many fathers and grandparents, they, they sacrificed, they worked overtime and did extra to get you a nice baseball bat or pair of cleats or to get you a violin or to get you to those lessons or just to get you around to back and forth to school. They had to sacrifice. There was an agony for you. That's the word Paul uses here, agon in Greek. It's where we get our word agony from. It's a hardship. It's a difficulty. And so everybody has made sacrifices for us to get here. 
You know, in America, we celebrate the 4th of July as our Independence Day. And you look at all those that signed the Declaration of Independence, and, and you look at what they lost. They lost farms. They lost families. They they lost limbs. They, they lost fortunes. Most of them became much poorer than they were before when they became an independent nation. But they didn't want taxation without representation. They wanted a new sense of liberty. And now some of us get to get born into this nation, and we have these unalienable rights and we have these liberties and I want to pause and think about those that had to give so much that we might be born into this sacrifices were made to get you where you are the apostle Paul had many persecutions in fact he's writing this letter from Rome under house arrest awaiting trial from Nero and maybe this was one of the agonies he was straining over he had been beaten many times for preaching the good news to to new cities Paul was one of those that would go where the gospel wasn't preached. And he would go to, to those Gentiles. We looked at last time. He, he goes to everybody, everywhere, and tries to present each person flawless before God. I mean, that was his mission. And because of that, he was flogged. He was stoned. He was left for dead. And now he's incarcerated, awaiting his execution. When I read that Bible in English, I should take a moment and thank God for John Huss, who translated the Bible into English and, and then was burned at the stake because of it. And when we have Halloween coming up, All Saints Day, that's the day that Martin Luther took those, those theses and nailed them to that church door at Wittenberg and, and, and really had the beginning of the Protestant Reformation where, where we could have the Bible in our own language, where we could have these new uh, popular doctrines that rather than just faith in baptism and faith in the rituals of the Roman Catholic Church, now we have faith in, in Christ and faith in the Scripture and, and that we can have salvation in this relationship with God, but it cost a lot of people a lot to get us this far. Secondly, you've been prayed for. Paul says, I'm in agony and I'm, I'm praying for you. In Ephesians chapter 1, Paul writes that I pray for you always. Last Sunday, we had a beautiful baptism. Young man, Philip, got baptized. And he, he had got himself in some trouble over the years. And when, when he was in that baptism, I could see the tears and fam friends and family members. And they had said things like, we had prayed for you. One of his friends said, man, I could hardly imagine this day would come, but I'm so glad it did. In other words, you were so lost. We didn't think you'd ever come to church. We didn't think you'd ever get baptized. We didn't think you'd ever quit your old ways. But we prayed for you, and we prayed for you, and we prayed for you. And I get to be that tip of the iceberg and, and be there with them when they get baptized. But those people around, they, they agonized in prayer for years. God, save him. God, don't let this be the last chapter. God, get him out of this. God, help him. God, bring him to you. And, and to see him choose water, baptism, man, just, just brought tears to their eyes. You, my friends, have, have been prayed for. Every Monday, there's a group that meets at the church and prays for our congregation and prays for those prayer cards. On Wednesday, uh, Mr. Anderson gets a group of people and they pray over those prayer cards and, and they, they seek God on behalf of our congregation. I, I pray for you daily. I have a, a long list of people in our congregation and prayer requests. And so we are praying for you. Those that came before you have already prayed for you. When I do a wedding, I pray for the couple and I pray for their children that are yet bo to be born, for their grandchildren that are yet to be born, that they would be godly, that this day, that the bringing of these families together for, for generations would be a blessing in the lives of many to come. People prayed for your great-great-grandmother, if they were a Christian, they already prayed for you for generations to come, that they would be godly. You know, there are people that have heard of you, that don't know you, that prayed for you. I mean, now more than ever with social media and people on Facebook and YouTube and videos we make and we can make a request known and somebody watching, they go, God, I'm praying for them. Lord, I, I hope they'll be all right. I mean, some of you guys are such prayer warriors. You watch a movie and you're praying for the characters and it's a fictional movie. <laughs> but you just, you have such a heart to love and such a heart to care. But, but people that have heard about you are, are praying for you. You don't know who's praying for you. Paul never shook their hands. He, he, he didn't know them face to face. He wouldn't recognize this congregation if they visited him. But he prayed for them. And that's how we can be. If you make a disciple, you should pray not only for that disciple, but for all the disciples that person's going to make into disciples. And that's how it goes. Paul knew Epaphras. And so he's praying for Epaphras and he's praying for his congregation. 
When I go to pastor's meetings, they say, hey, we're praying for Riverside Christian Assembly. Let's lift up the city of Riverside and Harupa Valley. Let's seek God on behalf of Pastor Drew's neighborhood. So they pray for the people they don't even know yet. You've been prayed for. Lastly, you've been hoped for. Let me tell you two dangerous, hurtful words. Potential and expectation. Oh, they will break your heart. I expected they would come. I expected this to happen. I expected this to grow by now. What happened? You had so much potential. And Paul is saying, I've been in agony for you because you can do it. I want you to grow. A puppy is cute, but you want a full-grown dog, right? I mean, a baby is cute, but you want it to grow into a full-grown man, right? I mean, a seed is wonderful, but you want a full-grown tree, right? It just represents what's going to be. I mean, for what it is, is beautiful and encouraging and marvelous. And it's the promise of more. In John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus promised us that we would do greater things. So as good as we have it, we want this next generation to have it better. As effective and as fruitful as our ministry is, we want to see the next generation have it even more fruitful. And that's what Paul's saying. I'm agonizing because I hope and I expect great things from you that you would continue this legacy. It does go by fast. And they warned me, they warned me that when you have a child, it goes by quick. And now here we are. My oldest is a turning 18 rather soon. And Man, I remember just getting married. I remember my wife telling me she was praying. I remember like a flashback. The great memories of pushing her on a swing and taking her to the doctor. I can remember the preschool and the kindergarten. I can remember the field trips. I mean, it goes by so quick. And all the potential that she has had when she was young. And, and now they, they grow up and you hope that you raised them right. You, you never stop agonizing for them. You never stop praying for them. You never stop having hopes for them. And so it is with the Apostle Paul. That he agonized and, and he has hopes and he believes the best for them. Today, friend, I want you to know there's people that they've prayed for you, that love you, that are encouraging you. We are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that you have called us to a holy calling. Lord, we thank you for our our parents, grandparents, and spiritual mentors that have agonized in prayer for us. Lord, we know that each of us has a great calling. Help us to fulfill it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, friends, family, Lord willing, we'll be back at it tomorrow. And if you're anybody, we got something for you. We got kids program, youth program, free kids karate every Wednesday night. Plus, we got recovery program. We got a men's group, a ladies group. We got an awesome time of worship and powerful speakers. We got a Bible study. All that on Wednesday. Plus, kids program. You can't go wrong at RCA. And then Saturday night service, Sunday, 830, 1030. Lord willing, we got another baptism this Sunday. Wow, shout outs to Unique, to Philip, to Star, to Daniel getting baptized last week. Read all about it in the newsletter this week. And I want to encourage you to check out my newest book, The Fall of the House of Ahab. You will love it. It's available on Amazon. Check out the YouTube channel. That being said, let's give some shout outs before we conclude. Isabel, good to see you. April, look out. Olivia, you are a prayer warrior. We'll be praying for you. Trent Ryder, Iris Ryder, Little One Ryder, come on. Good to see Jackson. Good to catch you guys. Dave Mac, Kevin Mac. Good to see seven minutes minutes with Mario Lowry. Good to see you. Des Andre Asian Unique to Kinkiana. Good to see you guys. Carlos, Candace. Good to see you guys. What a blessing. I'm telling you, Miss Kathleen, Miss Jeannie, we love you. We miss you. Oh, a lot of champions watching. Miss Elizabeth, Natalie, Andrea, Rico, Sophia, Jerry Walker, Melissa, Ashley, Gloria. Good to catch you guys. Say love, Felix. All oh, the host of champions that watches in the mornings. May the Lord bless you guys, keep you, and those watching on their way home later. Like my good friend Greg told me, when you hear the good news of Jesus Christ, you can on him.